Do you enjoy listening to multiplayer podcast content? Do you want to help support the show so we can continue to independently deliver two shows each week? Do you also want access to our exclusive Discord server so you can come game with us and make suggestions for future shows? Well, what are you waiting for? Head on over to MultiplayerSquad.com or click on the link in the podcast description to come join us on Patreon. We appreciate all of you for listening and subscribing. Now let's get into today's episode. Hey everyone, and thank you for tuning in to the Multiplayer Gaming Podcast. Today is Thursday, which means we are going to be breaking down gaming news that dropped here over the last week. I'm your host, Paul, and I'm joined today by my co-host. He just got caught hacking Outriders code to give himself 600 legendary weapons. It's Josh. Paul, I thought we agreed that we were not (laughs) going to announce that live on the show. (laughs) Yeah. Josh, you were you were hacking code hey. and and I think you got caught. Hey man, you want to you want to buy a legendary Paul? I got <laughs> I know a guy. I know a guy, man. <laughs> so, this is kind of a nice segue right into our first story here for today. So, if you're new to the Multiplayer Gaming Podcast, we are just a group of dads that like to have family-friendly conversations about gaming. And today we have quite a few news stories that we're going to talk about. I don't know if we're going to get through all of them, but I've got like eight or nine here in my outline, but we'll see. But the first one is related to Outriders. There has been some news about people cheating in the demo and how this issue is going to be dealt with after release. Josh, do you want to tell the people a little bit about what's going on here with Outriders? Oh, man, okay. Number one, people are crazy, okay? I have played the Outriders demo with all four characters because I want to know which class I want to play in the game itself, right? Right. And I have seen stories of people that have like 200 hours in Outriders already, and that's Just the demo, because you can play the demo as much as you want, right? You can just rerun these like three little side quests that they have and kill these three little like captain, like mini bosses as many times as you want. And your character will continue to level and the world tier will go up. So you'll start to get better loot. That's crazy. It's a demo, man. Like it's a demo. (laughs) 200 hours in a demo. Like I'm excited for Outriders. Don't get me wrong, but I cannot imagine. Being a guy that's just going to sit there and grind this like two hour demo a hundred times. It's so funny. And I love how it even caught the developer off guard. So this is made by a Polish company called People Can Fly. And they weren't even really too sure what to do about it. Because at first they were saying that that might be a problem. And they were going to do something about switching loot that got farmed in the demo. Then they came back and said, never mind, it's no problem. You'll keep all of your loot. And then they were switching some loot drop percentages. But I thought this was such a weird story that they have caught over 200 people cheating in a demo of Outriders. (laughs) But my favorite part of this is that People Can Fly says that they can see all of this. They know who's cheating. They haven't done anything about it yet. But they did specifically say, yes, we're even looking at you, the one person who gave himself 600 legendary weapons, which is just so funny to load up your inventory like that in a demo with early game gear. I don't I mean, you can get you can wind up actually getting like the higher end like weapons out of it because the world tier will continue to go up as you level. So you get you do get like stronger weapons, but like, why? Why would you fun. do that? It, that's my whole point is like, I get it. But then like you're playing this game that's no longer a game because you've just trivialized everything. Like, I don't I don't know, man. Like sometimes I don't I can't see into like the weird people's brains. Yeah, <laughs> you it just know does I mean? not and compute. Go, right. Yeah, that's <laughs> the best way to put it is this just does not compute with me at all. But yeah, that's the story. The really cool thing. And I love when developers do this, man, is. They said, look, if you're going to cheat, fine. We're not going to ban you. You know, you paid for the game. What we're going to do is we're going to brand you instead. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And so what they're doing is they are going to brand these guys as cheaters and they cannot get rid of the brand that they have and they will be match made with other cheaters when they try to play the game. Which is, oh, yeah, that's That's too funny. Yes. 
put all the cheaters on their own cheater island, let them compete against each other. Yeah, it, it's such a funny way to handle it, but I do love it because now if you're trying to stream and you have all of this great gear, but you cheated to get it, everyone will know because you'll see that branding on the heads up display. And they also said they were going to intentionally increase the matchmaking times if you're a branded cheater. And I was like, That's there it the is. Best. That's what you do. Make them wait 30 <laughs> minutes to get into a match with other cheaters. And I think that'll deter a lot of people from doing it. Yeah. I just I, like, you know, Cheating in video games to me is one of the dumbest things that somebody can ever do. Like you're playing this to have fun, like right. cheating in a game and you, cause you know, people have to pay money for these cheats usually, which is just really weird to me. But I, I love when developers find out like clever ways to do that. Yeah. Make their lives miserable, man. You know, honestly, like the long queue times is hilarious. Cause you know, some guy's going to be sitting there and it's going to be like, sorry, queue times are longer than normal. You know, and he's not going to know that he got busted or whatever. And he's just <laughs> right. going to be sitting there like, man, can't find any matches right now. I can't find anybody to play with. <laughs> yep. So by the time this episode drops, it'll actually be on the first. So Outriders yeah. is now out. Josh and I are probably in it as you're hearing this episode. And I did see a couple of community stats because I went through the demo a little bit once. I didn't quite finish on my first character. And out of curiosity, I looked up some stats and people are kind of picking in even percentages the four classes. Wow. So Trickster is a little bit more popular at 29% of players playing it. Pyromancer, 27%. Technomancer, which I tried 23%, and the Devastator is 21%. So they're all kind of relatively wow. even. I still don't know what class I'm going to play, Josh. Now, I am always fine filling in with the group. So I think you, me, and our friend Andy are going to be playing this as the main three person core. What are you playing? Are you going with the Trickster? I am 100% going Trickster. I played okay. all four classes through the demo completely each time. I did not grind 200 levels, nor did I grind, you know, <laughs> legendaries. But I did actually play all four all the way through. And to me, the Trickster, fits. it just fits my play style. I don't think it's any better of a character, but it right. just fits my play style. Like, I like that, like, teleport in, like, do damage, figure out a way to, like, get back out kind of thing. Um, you know, I'll teleport in at the worst time imaginable and get myself killed right away. And then you guys have to try to come, <laughs> you know, save me from the depths of, you know, the enemy stronghold or whatever, but it's the Josh special. Yeah, exactly. Is that, is that what we call it now? <laughs> That's what we call <laughs> it's it. Yes. <laughs> Getting picked early. It's yeah. the Josh special. Um, but it just fits my play style. Um, for me, if I had to like rank the characters and again, none of them are like better than the others, which I really like. But I would say the fun for me was probably Trickster and then, believe it or not, like Technomancer. And I know you didn't really care for the Technomancer a whole lot, but that would probably be my second pick. And then probably the Devastator and then the Pyromancer. Yeah. Well, I think our friend Andy is going to go with the Pyromancer, at least as of last I heard. So I think I'll probably try the Devastator first and we'll we'll see how it goes. It's very tanky, which I, I could see you being because I know you play tank a pretty good yeah. bit. Yeah. And they have some really neat abilities, too. So I, that's in my mind. That's kind of what I envisioned, envisioned. Yeah. you know, as far as that goes. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it, man. It's it should be a lot of fun. Nice. So our second story that we have here is actually related to Fall Guys, which we have not played in quite some time. <sighs> now, if you follow Fall Guys... Season four went live. We know about this because our good friend Todd posted about this update in our Discord channel. Todd was super excited. We have a separate Discord that's just our personal friends, and we actually have 31 people in there. I didn't know it was that many, but I went and looked. And so Todd posts a link about how they unlocked squad mode in Fall Guys. With multiple exclamation marks. So many exclamation marks. <laughs> exclamation marks for days. <laughs> and I went back and I checked our Discord because I wanted to be able to accurately quote how this conversation went down. So Todd posted the link and wrote, I think this will help, exclamation mark, down to try it tonight, at Paul, at Josh. <laughs> and do you remember what I said back to Todd? <laughs> I said, you wish, buddy. <laughs> 
and Josh, you didn't even respond I at didn't, all. I didn't. That's Crickets. that was my response. Is I'm not playing Fall Guys again. I just I love that Todd got so excited about it. Oh yeah, like this was somehow going to bring back like the Fall Guys. <laughs> like yeah, like everybody was going to be on board with this, and then it was just like no. And then we did have a conversation about it a little bit after that. My my issue is it's still the gameplay. It's still the randomness of getting bumped off of the map. I don't care if it's squad based now and I'm not out of the, the competition, but it's like I still got knocked off the map because I got stuck in a horde of like 50 people. You know, like I just mm-hmm. find the gameplay in that game a little bit frustrating um, but yeah, it was pretty funny to see Todd get super excited. And then I felt like it was like a kid unwrapping coal for Christmas. Oh yeah. He must've <laughs> been so sad. He was so disappointed. <laughs> well, it was funny too, because then two of our other friends were like, oh yeah, Fall Guys, I heard of that. Let me check it out. And then after that, Todd was like, well, that's only three of us. That's not even a full squad. So like, I think he just kind of gave up on he it did. at he, that point. To his credit, he gave up pretty quick because I think he realized we were not he tried again three days later he posted again and i posted back because no one replied for like three hours and then i just put the john travolta pulp fiction meme where he's looking around the house and there's no one there oh yeah that's right yeah it's like no this is not getting traction with our friend group that's like our other buddy brandon who Mm -hmm. wants who like brandon is very very loyal to like three video games and that's it and so brandon like tried the cycle and loved the cycle you know back in the day when we were playing the cycle like crazy it was you know he got hooked on it and to this day brandon still tries to go hey guys you know be fun (laughs) to do tonight let's play the cycle and then you know we're always like yeah no it's not gonna happen but i guess they (laughs) like legitimately they tried to play the other night and said they sat in queue for like 10 minutes and then there was nobody. There was like nobody in the game. They never got a game to play. And then they finally just left. And I was like, it's this is sad, man. That player base just deteriorated so quickly. They said there was no one in their lobby. They never saw anyone pop in or out. So it seemed at least like at that time of day, it was just kind of dead, which is yeah. sad, you know, rip. Well, We also have another update coming up. So we heard a little bit about a release date for Rust on console, which we have talked a little bit about on the show, but this is set for release now on May 21st. It's not that far away. Not really. You know, and it's console version. I was actually reading that article because this is, you know, Rust is near and dear to us, but they were saying something like, they it's re- it was actually really hard to optimize because you know even on a really good PC when you load in a Rust it's a long loading screen man there is a ton of assets and stuff that have to load I mean it's a solid two to three minute load time it's only exceeded by GTA Online yeah which which now might even be shorter now that say. they implemented their changes <laughs> so Rust might now take the cake I don't know but yeah Rust takes so long to load. They were saying that they were really struggling because with consoles, they were seeing some load times into like the 30 minute mark. Yeah. Which I can't imagine somebody like trying, but they, they did say they got it down to where it was like only a few minutes at that point. Um, they did say they're completely different versions too. Like the Rust console is independent of like Rust for PC. So they'll get different updates, you know, independent of each other and stuff like that. But it's, I know, I know we have a lot of people in the podcast discord that are very excited to be able to play Rust on console because they don't have PC. And I'm really looking forward to sharing their misery with them. I can't (laughs) wait for people to start like, you know, being like, man, this game's great. I see why you guys love it so much. And then being like, Oh, it's awesome. Isn't it? Like being really excited and then just waiting for them to be like, guys, my base got raided and I lost everything. (laughs) If you want to simulate addiction. Rust is kind of like the best way to do it because it's so good. The endorphin hits and inevitably it just leaves you empty, hollow, destroys your life. It inevitably gets there. There is a part of me that is looking forward to seeing that happen. (laughs) (laughs) Be able to watch it happen in others. Sorry ahead of time. (laughs) Yeah, it sounds like this was an awful lot of work because they've been working on it for over three years. But Rust on PC requires 10 gigs of RAM. 
And in order for them to do it on console, they had to work with only four and a half gigs of RAM. So they did have to rework it from the ground up because I want to know, is the console version still going to have all the same goofy quirks as the PC edition? Like, are there going to be just a hundred bears that all get stuck at the corner of the map because they all just run paths until they get stuck and not enough people are hunting them because every time we play Rust, you always see all the animals get stuck in the same area. And I'm wondering if that kind of stuff will also exist on console. I would think it would. I mean, I kind of almost hope that it does because that's the little quirks that kind of make <laughs> yeah. Rust like endearing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and then if it's like, if they're not, then I'm going to be like, well, wait a minute. Like, how can we get on the PC version? <laughs> yeah. Like, I remember last time we had played, we had, or actually it was two times ago that we played, we had a base in the desert and anytime you'd open the back door, there'd be three wolves that were just waiting as soon as you'd open the door, because all of them would path and get stuck on our base and just get stuck there. You know, I can't really imagine playing Rust on console. Can you imagine inventory management of trying to move hundreds of items between no. all of your boxes? It would be a nightmare. There's going to be challenges to the console version. I mean, I'm really glad that people are going to get to experience it. It's a phenomenal game. But there is a lot about Rust that is going to be weird. Like, I mean, building, like you said, inventory, man. Just juggling, like putting stuff in chests and pulling it out, you know, crafting. Um, I, I think there's definitely going to be some. But, I, I mean, maybe they accounted for this stuff, too. Like, I, maybe they made new menus or something. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I was talking a little bit to my son this week, who is 11 years old, and he was telling me that he had to confess that he is now a console video gamer. Oh, that he no, does not Paul. like using mouse and <gasps> keyboard. So I did you promptly took him you out of the will. Him? Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> he's, say he's out like... of the will. <laughs> Pondering putting him up for adoption. Uh, no, but he was saying that he's a big Fortnite player, and he says that he thinks it's actually a lot easier to build things for him on console. So I think the building in Rust probably won't be too bad because everything pops into a grid, kind of like yeah, Fortnite, right? So I don't think that'll be too tough. But Rust just has so many items and huge inventory, huge crafting systems. Like a lot of times I would just hit the quick key to craft and start typing the item like bear rug or whatever, and then you could craft it. It's not going to be so easy doing that on console. So I, I'm not interested in playing on console, but I, I'm very happy that it's going to reach more people because it's such a great game. Yeah. I'm sorry about your child, Paul. Yeah, that's okay. I'm going to, I'm going to join a support group, All parents right. of console gamers. <laughs> 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 no, that's okay. I love console. We've got our PS5 and our Switch. I, I like them as well. I just obviously prefer PC. You got to love the mouse and keyboard. All right. Well, next up was a story that I know is near and dear to your heart, Josh. This is a little story about Monster Hunter releasing on Switch. I'll, I'll let you take the reins on this one. Okay, so I, I will. I'm going to qualify this story as I have not actually ever played Monster Hunter. I uh -huh. I have hovered over the buy button on Monster Hunter World many many a time in Steam. I have too. And then just not bought it because I'm like, I think I'll play this game for like six hours and then I'll never play it again. Um, but with that said, something that is near and dear to my heart is when there is a game coming out that I am very excited for. <laughs> what do uh -huh. I do, Paul? You request time off. Work. I, I request time off of work, right? Because I'm like, <laughs> hey, what better use of my time off of work than to sit and play a game that I'm super amped to play? Well, I guess a little game by the name of Monster Hunter Rise was coming out for the Switch. Yep. And a company in Japan started to notice that a lot, like a lot of their employees <laughs> were requesting off on this a, one specific day. A, a problematic amount of people. Yes. And so they went, <laughs> wait a minute. And that's when it dawned on this company that that day that everybody was asking off of work was the day that Monster Hunter Rise released. So what does this company do? Something that every company should do they declared mm -hmm. that day a holiday and <laughs> gave it. their entire company the day <laughs> off <laughs> and i just went yes like what like way to go company i don't even know the name of the company man but i thought that was awesome oh it's too funny yeah i i jotted it down i guess their name is mark on 
And this is your kind of company, Josh. Like, this is the company you should be working for. They are a VR game developer. Apparently, you get time off for big video game releases. You famously had to keep pushing back your time (laughs) off request for Cyberpunk time and time again. Yes. So here it would be just built in as part of your package. Just kudos to them, man. You know, it's like, hey, there's something that so many of you want to do. You're taking the time off of work. You have this time that you're allowed to take. You know what? What that tells me is the leaders of that company are like solid gamers and probably wanted the day off. (laughs) <laughs> so that they yeah. could play and they're like hey you know this actually works out pretty well um but yeah i have actually never requested time off to play a game <gasps> i've never done that i have been online at midnight and i have played until four or five in the morning and then slept for two hours and gone into work i've done that but i remember at my first job at at a movie theater i had two co-workers uh, Nick and I forget the other guy's name, but anyway, they both had worked at Subway before Harkins. And I remember them telling me that the day Diablo two had released, they just shut down the entire Subway and then left and went out to go buy Diablo two and then came back a few hours later. So they weren't like the owners of that franchise oh, or anything. They were man. just employees Uh-oh. and they just hung a sign <laughs> and closed <laughs> until 2 PM or whatever. <laughs> And just, you know, came back later in the day. So that's like even higher stakes. Hey, no risk it, no biscuit, man. That's, you know, that's what, that's the saying. And that's the saying for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't know, man. I, I, I ask time off of work. I have to be really excited about it. Like I'm really excited about Outriders, but I didn't ask off for work for Outriders. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, you know, but there are a few games you know, cyberpunk came to mind, um, long ago, Wildstar, when Wildstar was coming out, I was very excited about that. That was one where I actually like took off of work, went to bed at like eight o'clock so that we could wake up at like three <laughs> o'clock in the morning to start playing so that we wow. could have like hours and hours of playtime before our families woke up <laughs> so, so that we could like play like uninterrupted for like five or six hours straight. It was stupid, man, but. Wow, that's dedication right there, even to change your sleep cycle. All right, and then the next story that I have here is that there have been some reports that Microsoft is trying to buy Discord, a product very near and dear to our heart. We do almost all our communication on Discord for $10 billion. $10 billion. Capital B. Yeah, that's a lot of cash. Um, <laughs> Kashish. It, yeah, it's what's funny about, I mean, it makes sense. Kudos to Microsoft. They are, dude, they're, they're doing everything they can to try to get into the gamer market. I mean, you know, they, they purchased Zenimax Media. Uh, you know, they're doing all this stuff, these exclusives for PC and Xbox, buying up these companies, buying Discord. Like, this is great. Like, good job, Microsoft. The the only thing, and I'm, I'm sure you've seen this, are the memes that are mm-hmm. coming out where it's like the Grim Reaper. Yeah. And it goes into, like, the door with, uh like, AOL Mixer. or Skype or whatever it is, you know. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, it's just showing, like, all these things that Microsoft <laughs> has killed in the past. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of makes sense. I was re- reading a couple articles about it, and they were saying that apart from the Xbox Live community, Microsoft doesn't really have any products that address large communities of people. And they were saying, you know, Google obviously has YouTube, and Amazon has Twitch, Facebook bought Instagram and WhatsApp. And so Microsoft tried to buy TikTok and it failed. They tried to buy Pinterest and it failed. So clearly they're trying to interface with a large community and Discord would be a great way to do it. I do worry a little bit seeing how they took like the Mixer product and it ended up dying and it doesn't exist anymore. So I don't know how badly they could screw up Discord, but (sighs) it's such a great service. I mean, they're not a sponsor, but... I am a big fan. Yeah, it's, I mean, we'll see. I'm curious to see what they do with it. I mean, kudos to Discord, man. $10 billion is an awful lot of money, you know? So that's, I mean, congratulations to those guys and gals. Um, I I would think that if Microsoft was smart, they would integrate Discord into like a lot of their services. Like my biggest hope with anything that Microsoft does is please give PC users of the Xbox game pass a better interface. 
because yeah. the Xbox Game Pass for PC is absolutely terrible. It is so unuser friendly. I mean, we were joking the other night when we were playing Bleeding Edge how hard it was to party up. Sea of Thieves is like it's stupid to try to party up and play together. We're going to play Outriders on Game Pass and what was I saying? Like I might pay $60 just so I can use <laughs> Steam's party system so that I don't have to use Xbox Game Pass for PC. And then the cheap side of me kicked in and I was like, well, <laughs> like okay, <laughs> it's only not. 10 bucks a month. So yeah, I'll never forget when we were trying to figure out the party system for the first time. And I remember I would hit the start button and start typing Xbox. And I had all these Xbox apps, the Xbox Game Bar, Xbox, Xbox for PC. And I'm Xbox like, I don't know app. which is which. And I <laughs> one at a time, I'd have to click on it. Okay, is this where I invite my friends? And oh, man, yeah, it was not very user friendly. I don't know if they've made any updates because we haven't tried to use it in a long time, but... We'll have to try again with Outriders now that we're hopping back in. I got the Xbox game bar stuck on my PC desktop and I could not remove it for anything. <laughs> I uninstalled, but it will see it's like part of Windows, so it won't let you uninstall just the game bar. Oh. I had to go into the registry and delete manually delete like it. manually delete registry stuff because it was just plastered on my screen and it's an overlay from Windows. So no matter what I was doing, this stupid like toolbar was there. It was terrible. I like, hopefully I didn't mess up something, you know, that I need for outriders now, but yeah, well, I guess we'll find out. Yeah. I remember when we got our first computer, when I was growing up and I remember my dad teaching me about the registry files, like auto exec dot bat. Do not touch this file. No matter what you do, do not touch it. You know? And so that's always really stuck in my head where I think even today I'd be too afraid to go into any registry because my dad just so instilled that fear in me that you don't want to oh, touch it. It's like doing brain surgery, man. You just don't <laughs> attempt it, you know? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's all the time that we have here for today. Thanks for joining us for This Week in Gaming. We will be back with a full episode on Monday where Josh and I will be jumping into the world of Divinity Original Sin 2. And then please come check us out on social media. You can find us everywhere at Multiplayer Pod on YouTube at Multiplayer Podcast. And then if you'd like to help support the show, since Josh and I don't have a gotcha system, we don't sell random loot boxes. <laughs> uh, but if you'd like to come support us, you can find us at MultiplayerSquad.com, which will forward you to our Discord. Or I'm sorry, forward you to our Patreon page, where you can support starting off at $5 a month, which will also get you access to our Discord podcast page. And so I think that covers everything here for today, and we'll see you guys on Monday. For the record, the five seconds of silence before each episode is the hardest part of every episode for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the longest five seconds of your day. You know, just, just, it's not easy for me to be quiet for five seconds, Paul.